Oi, lad. How's it going then? I am well. And you? Oh, I can't complain. There was something I've been meaning to tell you. I met your dad. It was a long time ago, in London. I was just a boy. Well, didn't meet him really. Just saw him to a fella in at the London Opera House. I was sitting in the balcony with an uncle of mine. Went to have a piss. And when I came back, there's your dad. Dashing as they call me was. Shirt, jacket, immaculate. My uncle was just slumped there. Looked like he was sleeping, but I knew better, even if I was only a child. Your da locked eyes on me. <laughs> and I don't think I've ever been so frightened as I was in that instant. It wasn't a fear that he was going to cause me pain. It was this sense that he saw right through me, into my heart, and he would crush it if it had pleased him. But he didn't. He just raised his finger to his lips and gestured for my silence. I complied. And then he was gone. That must have been in the days before his betrayal was made public. He would have sailed for the colonies not long after. I'm astonished that you were actually there. You can imagine my surprise when I saw his face. It took me a while to piece it together, but uh, there you have it. Thought you'd like to know. Thank you. How are you faring? I'm not bad, not bad. All this reminds me of being back in the old country. Fighting for land, fighting for the right to see God my way. Didn't take long before I realized the fight was futile, except aboard a ship bound for the colonies. People over there are so wrapped up in how you perceive the Lord, they forget we're all part of his flock. Stories change, Connor. The way people tell them evolves. It's no different in the Bible, and I believe that's the real root of all the strife back home. But nobody wants to listen to me. If you don't see it their way, you're a heathen. But I feel we're honestly making a difference here. That our presence is felt, if not appreciated by all. And it makes me sleep easy at night, and that's all a man can ask for, really. I would like to visit your home country someday. How would you know? You'd turn a head or two in the Emerald Isle, I'll tell you that. Maybe one day I'll muster up the courage, go back, I'll bring you with me. <laughs> It'd be good for a laugh at any rate. The first time I saw the light was back in Boston. I was trading my biggest take of the season when the fire rose behind Beacon Hill. Went straight up in the night sky, past the moon. Then it was gone. I wasn't alone. Those next to me had their heads cocked the same, craned as far back as it could go, mouths agape. Couldn't tell you what it was, but I can tell you it wasn't of this earth.
I've got no trouble here. No. Help me carry.
But Governor Hutchison refuses to let them leave. He wants us to... What happens now? We wait for the signal. What signal? This meeting can do nothing further to save the country. That one. Evening, gentlemen. Shall we be off? No. What's the matter? I have spent today drawn from one bit of madness to another with nothing to show for it. Before I go any further, I would like to know exactly what it is you intend. Of course. First, we make our way to Nathaniel Bradley's house to fetch the rest of our little group. Then it's on to Griffin's Wharf, where we board the ships and dump the tea. Simple as that. Simple seems a bit charitable. Cheer up, Connor. For tonight, we are all victors. The Sons of Liberty get to send a message to England, and you rob William Johnson of his financing. Your village will be saved. I've an idea. Why don't you lead the way? That should keep us out of any further trouble. Am I right? Damn it, more guards. We need to turn the crowd's anger to our advantage. Stay the world, Connor, and I will make it so. Ugh! <sighs> 
We need to keep those bastards at bay while the tea is being dumped. Let me help. I'm yours to command. Men, lots. Connor, we saved the last one for you.
Best we get out of here, huh? Stefan, how is your ale? Peace, but it gets the job done. My father would be disgusted, but after a day's work with you, a man needs to unwind. I would prefer a nice bottle of wine, but these colonies lack refinement. Your father? Mon père. He was a great man. A cook in the French army during the Seven Years' War. He marched all across the White North, feeding Louis-Joseph de Montcalm and his officers, cooking them feasts from sticks and berries. When the commander-in-chief opted for open conflict over manning the battlements of Quebec, every man was called to arms, including my father. He died on the field. But I'm told he fought ferociously. It matters little. He's gone now. He would be proud of you. This is my one hope, that he smiles upon the choices I've made. Connor, do you have time to sit? I do. Good. I have been meaning to ask you. How did you come to Aziz? I did not ask for it. But I feel it was meant to happen. I was just a boy when I met Achilles. He made me a warrior. <laughs> is that easy? I miss the kitchen, if you can believe it. I had more control in that world than I ever will in the one we inhabit. But more people get to taste the fruit of my labor in this line of work, and for that, I am satisfied. We may change things yet, if we press on. Frenchmen from the North never grow weary. Just ask the women! <laughs> What's he got this time? Let me see, let me see. That won't do it, boy. 
Get some more and then we'll barter. Yeah, man. 